What's up, y'all? Ruben Davis, Future Doc here. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over my step one study strategy. But before I get into that, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to get more videos like this and just want to follow along with my journey to becoming a doctor. Hit that like button. Comment down below where you are on your journey and any tips you might have for MCAT, step one, step two, whatever. Doesn't matter. Just put your tips down there to help support the community. All right, let's get into it. So first, let me start with my resources that I'm using to study. Uh, so we got Pathoma for pathology, just to review. I prefer Pathoma over Boards and Beyond just because the, the videos overall tend to be a little bit shorter. Uh, at least in my opinion, I think they're, they've been a little bit shorter. And he's more succinct, just kind of going in on a pathology. I really just want to start it with start with the diseases and that kind of review. And he does do some physiology kind of giving you the normal and then what's going on with the change. So I just like, I just like Pat, Pathoma. Um, they really got me through a lot of the blocks for my first and the beginning of second year. Uh, sketchy farm, sketchy micro, of course, those are goaded for those because there's so many bugs, so many drugs and sketchy is just a great way to remember that. I'm also using Anki. And if you've been following the channel, you know, I don't like Anki, <laughs> but I do like flashcards. I usually do flashcards by hand, but it's just so much, so much, so much to do. And I don't want to make flashcards for this. And they're already pre-made decks for, um, sketchy micro sketchy farm. I believe it's the pepper deck and I don't remember the name. I'll try to maybe leave the links down below in the description if I can find them again. But if you just Google sketchy micro Anki deck, a Reddit page will certainly pop up where you can click the link, download it, and then put it into your Anki. But I'm using Anki because I need to reinforce what I'm learning in Sketchy because watching it, I can kind of remember it a little bit, but like, you know, you need, you got to reinforce, you got to have that active, active recall. And there's a lot of information to know, and I'm going to be studying for a while. So I'm going to forget a lot of things I had and I studied in the beginning. So to kind of mitigate that, I'm going to use Anki to try to keep refreshing my memory on some of the things that I'm studying earlier on in my step studying. Uh, UWorld, of course, similar reasons for practice because that's gonna give me practice at how the information is gonna be presented to me on the exam. Because, you know, learning the content is one thing, but when you're reading a vignette of a patient, you gotta be able to recognize X, Y, Z and be able to, you know, do all the things and put into practice and put into, you know, practical terms what these diseases are because there's a lot of times going to be two step, three step questions where it's like, okay, you got to, but beyond just recognizing what the disease is, you got to remember any specific details about the genetic inheritance, uh, the drug of choice to use, um, you know, various things like that. And you got to know those second level and they might even talk about the treatment and like, Oh, which one of these is most likely to, that they use, right? You don't just remember to remember the drug name. You got to remember, what what is the mechanism mechanism of action for that drug? So there's a lot of layers to it, and you gotta practice picking out those pieces in the vignette. Like it'll be something simple as like, oh, this was a construction worker, and that's gonna give you the details. Like it it could be it's an anemia, and it's like fifty different anemias, you know, <laughs> not fifty, but you know, uh, <laughs> different types of anemia. But that one fact will lead you to lead poisoning. I bring that up because I literally just had to, <laughs> you know, go through that in some some of my studying already. Uh, so yeah, those are my main tools. I'm also using first aid, of course, as like, you know, my big review, I kind of follow along through first aid because first aid goes into a little bit more detail about, you know, the physiology and different things that path pathoma doesn't. So I just kind of to really reinforce some other things and to get that visual that you, I won't get from pathoma. I go to there cause they have a lot of nice graphs and charts, um, and things like that, 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 that I can utilize to continue my study. So that's sort of the re resource breakdown. Let me go into my schedule. So I am still in a, my final block for school. I haven't started dedicated yet. I started dedicated at the end of January. As of now, I think it's January 8th right now, January, something like that. Yeah. Um, and so I don't get that to dedicate it until the end of January. So we are in behavioral science, which is notoriously, uh, you know, a pretty chill block. Um, definitely still got to study. I haven't really, but I haven't really been going to class. I've just been watching them on two times speed, which is what I do normally. But considering that this block, nobody ever really fails this block historically. And so far, like I've, you know, watching the lectures, like it's not terrible. So I've been kind of prioritizing step one. 
and still I'm still going along, but I've been prioritizing at that point. But here's my schedule so far, and this schedule will probably be similar to when I uh, start dedicated as well. So waking up, trying to wake up early, 6 a.m., go to the gym. You know, me and my wife, you know, we're trying to get get fit. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's just think it's important to just kind of maintain that balance um, and staying healthy. So going to the gym, 6 a.m. workouts. Sometimes I work with my wife. Sometimes I work out with my, my guy, Chip. Then breakfast, of course. 8 to 12 is going to be content review where I'm just going to watch, probably watch, you know, chapters on, in Pathoma, referencing it with step one. Uh, like first aid rather, and and then take a break, lunch, whatever. And around one, one thirty two, depending on you know how how I'm moving, I'm just gonna go through some U world questions to kind of reinforce what I was learning uh, in the content review, kind of trying to put it to practice to really put the pieces together. Uh, and then you know I'll take a break after that. That'll be probably about one to three ish kind of i'm trying to do at least 50 to 75 questions a day just because i want to get through all the questions and that's kind of what i calculated that i can get through all the questions by like at least a week before i take step one. Oh, i probably should have started with this my scheduled date for step one is march 1st so i have a little over two months or i guess about two months now uh to you know, really lock in on studying. I've already been studying, but I really just recently started like really, really locking in. I've been doing some U world questions to kind of like, you know, bring the practice back, but I'm really, I've really just started locking in in this new year. Um, and it's feeling good. It's feeling good so far. We're doing some things. I'm like, wow, I really haven't looked at this in like over a year. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but you know, it's coming back. It's coming back. So, but I'll probably take a break after some of the U world, uh, U world, you know, it's about like, two to three. Uh, right now, while I'm in um, my behavioral science block, I'm definitely, I'm going to be reviewing that, watching those, rewatching those lectures or watching the lectures for the first time, two times speed, of course, from about four to however really long that takes. Um, usually, you know, a few hours. I'll do that, take a break for dinner. Uh, that'll probably be around seven, eight, something like that. And then uh, come back from about 9 to 11, 10 to 11, doing some more U world questions. The goal is to really get in a lot of practice. If you've seen my MCAT prep videos, my biggest thing and how I proved my score was practice. You know, that's how I learned the best. That's how I reinforce the best. And that's how most people learn the best. You know, that active recall where you have to put the pieces together. The only way to learn how to do that is to do that. You know, you can't, you're not going to do well if you're only doing Anki, if you're only like watching the content, you know, you have to actually practice reading and understanding because it's a long exam and you can really get burnt out with, you know, those just going through those questions. If you're not used to it, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big challenge. So that's sort of my uh, my schedule there. Um, but now I'm just going to get into some tips for success that I've gleaned from watching other videos on YouTube and talking to other people in classes before me who have taken it. Um, and just some of my previous testing history uh, with the MCAT, for example, and just learning, you know, how to be better at taking these you know, board and practice, I mean, uh, these board and, you know, big exams here. So number one is consistency over intensity, right? You have to be consistent every day. You have to be looking at the material and working and practicing with the material, right? Because it's a lot to go over. And so you can't do it all in just, you know, one sitting. And you shouldn't expect yourself to do it all in one sitting because you're not going to remember it all. So it's better to be consistent than trying to do a lot at once and, you know, really fast. So, you know, make sure you start early. You know, don't start super late. Don't only start during dedicated. Stay consistent. And you should, you know, you should start seeing those results because you got to see, you want to see the progress, right? And the only way to see progress is to be consistent and to give yourself the time to make progress, all right? Secondly, active recall versus just passive learning and reading so if you're only doing content review you know you definitely that's definitely not going to cut it you definitely need to make sure you're practicing and actively recalling the things that you're learning whether that's through flashcards 
practice questions, you know, however you do it. Like some of the way I take notes is creating questions. I have like a toggle feature in Notion where I, you know, I learn while I'm learning, I cre generate questions to have myself actively recall the information. So it's like a, it's almost like a flashcard and essentially, but in question form, sometimes I might try to make my own vignettes to sort of help myself synthesize information and lock it in. But you need to be active recalling it. You could do brain dumps, like right after you learn, like let's say for my content review from eight to 12, right after that, I try to brain dump everything I have. So sometimes I'll just make blank blocks. Like I'll just have like the topics I went over, I'll just have them. I'll just like list them as I'm going through them. Then at the end, I'll try to go in and fill in as much information as I can to just actively recall that and to, you know, help my memory just kind of lock that in and synthesize it. So active versus passive, you got to be intentional. You can't just look at it and gloss over, you know, you need to be very intentional about how you're looking at this information and handling the data. All right. And taking breaks, make sure you're taking breaks because it's a lot to go over. And like I said, you can't do it all at once. And it's easy to just get burnt out trying to grind and grind and grind. And then next, you know, you don't got, you, know, you don't have the energy. You don't have the drive to do it. So you got to put, put in those breaks so that, you know, studying isn't such a hassle. It's like treat it like a job, you know, you're, you're nine to five, you're studying. And then after that, you're relaxing. Don't even think about it. You did your, you did your work. You put in the work, you put in the time. So be graceful with yourself about that. All right. So make sure you're taking those strategic breaks. And even, even while you're studying, you know, do some Pomodoro 60, 10 is my favorite 60 minutes on 10 minutes off. You know, some people do 30, 10, whatever you're, whatever works for you, you know, just make sure you're taking breaks, taking time to do things you enjoy as well. Um, especially during dedicated, like definitely study and dedicate your time like it's meant for, but go to the movies travel a little bit, you know, just bring your stuff with you to, you know, do, do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no harm in that. As long as you're staying disciplined, you know, you got to stay disciplined in both the fun and the hard work. And that's how you see the results. Also make sure you recognize your weak areas. So whatever blocks you struggled on, make sure you're prioritizing those blocks. Um, and maybe start those blocks early so that you can come back to ag them again in the end. All right. So if you struggled, struggled with derm stuff, I know, like I did, like all the pictures, they just, everything looks the same, <laughs> you know? So if you struggle with that, make sure you're getting those early and often, make sure you understand what works for you. All right. And, and you're prioritizing those things and you have a schedule. You know, you kind of know how you're kind of going through the things like me. I'm just kind of I know I'm just going to go through all of Pathoma and then I'm going to come back and highlight some of those things that I struggled on. So I, that, that's kind of my schedule. It's not like necessarily laid out, but just have a schedule and a plan that you can attack because that was my thing. I was like, what do I even start with? I don't even know what to start with. So I just started from the beginning. <laughs> I like to start from the beginning. Just start somewhere. If you're struggling on where to start, just start somewhere. Or like, where did you just look at your grades? What was your lowest exam score? Start there. You know, that's a great place to start. Um, and then, you know, look at some of the high yield areas and make sure you're hitting those as well. Apparently, um, uh, high yield Pathoma chapters one to three. That's what everybody keeps telling me. That's what I'm seeing, like in all the videos, uh, you know, and there's, uh, you know, uh, path pathology and all these other things. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of things, just a lot of videos on YouTube talking about those things specifically. So go to those. But this just I'm just talking about my approach at this point, not necessarily the specifics of the content. So. Just make sure you make a scary a schedule. Highlight those weak areas. All right, some common things to avoid. Okay, one of them being resource overload, right? And this is, I think, common even in the blocks, right? There are a lot of resources out there. Everybody's using a lot of different tools, and they probably are using things that you aren't using and things you've never heard of, right? Just stick to what was working for you during your blocks. Right. For me, Pathoma has always worked for me. Boys and Beyond as well. Like I probably use some of those as well, depending if I feel like I didn't get enough from that. I might when I'm on my second pass through, I might go through Boys and Beyond instead of Pathoma. Um, we'll see how that goes. But just stick with what works for you. All right. Don't try to get super cute. Don't try to do a whole bunch of things. You know, don't try. This isn't the time to really figure it out unless you're this is your months away. That's the time to kind of figure it out. But for the most part. If you're just a few months away, 
like just stick with what you know stick with what works you know you don't have to you don't have to reinvent the wheel here just keep doing what works don't feel like you have to use a bunch of resources that other people are using um i will say there's some resources that work better than others so you know if if what's been working for you hasn't really been working like really assess that then then try some new things but otherwise you know do do what works for you um you know if you don't like sketchy you don't have to use sketchy you know what I'm saying? If you don't like Anki, you don't have to use Anki. You don't feel like you have to do it because everybody else is doing it or because I'm doing it. We all learn differently. Make sure you're prioritizing yourself and how you learn over just what you see other people doing. Um, and like I said, I already mentioned the passive studying. Just be intentional. Be intentional with your studying every time. Try not to just go through the motions. Try to really make sure that like you're understanding what you're what you're looking at. Like a lot of it should just be like, oh, I'm just remembering this. But if you didn't really learn it the first time, make sure you learn it this time, you know, because you need to. And because after this, we're getting into the hospital. You know, this is that last hurdle for us. We can't go into our third year until we pass step one. I, I think that's a common thing. So but after that, we got to take this information into real people. <laughs> right. And when we see cases in real, real life, real time, where we're making differentials and all that type of stuff. So be very intentional about this because it's going to benefit you in the long run, right? You know, you might have been able to skate through it, through it like the first time around, but this, this second pass around, be very intentional about making sure you're actually getting the material. Like if you're not understanding something, take the time to understand it. Now's the time to do that. Um, just, just go ahead, be intentional. And I say that a lot to some of my MCAT people too, when they ask me for advice, I'm like, be very intentional about what you're learning. Like they're just trying to like look at everything and feel like they looking at everything is enough. No, you need to be very intentional about like, do I actually understand what I'm learning? Um, definitely don't avoid your self-care. All right. You know, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but take breaks, take care of yourself, study in groups. Okay. Have take make some time to study with other people around you, whether that's going to the library, studying with people in your class, like don't just isolate yourself because that's a surefire way to get burnt out and just tired and unmotivated. So, you know, study with people, study around other people, interact with them, talk to them, take breaks, take care of yourself, do things you enjoy. All right. All those things, self-care, very important, very important, especially in this field that we're trying to get into. You got to start practicing it now. So that when you're spending 12 hours in the hospital, you know how to do it. You know, self-care is something that we have to practice, right? Especially as people who might be more selfless where we don't really take time to take care of ourselves. So make sure you're prioritizing that. It will help you in the long run, all right? So that's really it for this video. I appreciate y'all tuning in. This is just, I just want to make sure I can give this a disclaimer. Like this is my study approach, right? Just sort of the generalized things that I'm doing don't feel like you have to do this all right there's a bunch of other videos as well cross-reference it take what's good for you leave what's not and just stay true to yourself like i said do what works for you do what's been working for you and if you don't know where to start just blindly pick something and go and then get into it and as you do it you'll start to figure it out all right and then from there try to make a plan get it done but anyways Appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure you like this video. Comment down below your study strategy and anything that you felt like was helpful in this video and anything that you feel like can help other people be successful and pass step one. As always, thank y'all for tuning in. Future Doc.